Isra, as a 16-year-old climate activist, what is the most commonly asked question that you get? This is probably how I balance um, school and organizing, especially being a high school junior. Is that a real struggle for you? It's like a battle of like how many excused absences I can get in a <laughs> quarter because I it's super hard to like go to public school as well as like be out of town for like organizing things as well as speaking engagements. So it's it's kind of like a really hard balancing act. I feel like your science teacher might give you more excused absences or be a middle, little more lenient. Is that true? I haven't actually talked to my teachers about what I do explicitly. A lot of them no to some degree, but <laughs> this is kind of how it goes. And how about your classmates? How do they react when you tell them about your activism work? So I don't really tell my classmates the work that I do. I guess they all just know. It's more of like, like it's more awkward because I have like Instagram followers now. So it's more <laughs> of like, Isra's famous. And also I don't really talk to anybody about my work because everybody like already has an understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that conversation's already done before I even start it. Isra, tell me, how old were you when you really became an activist? I grew up going to protests as a kid. The first one I went to, I, the like, first one I remember was when I was in like, first grade. Like, I always wanted to change the world, and so I never labeled myself as an activist until people started labeling me as one, but I've always had the same mindset and mentality of wanting to change the world. And obviously a six-year-old can't do that on her own, so I had to wait further down the line. But I mean, it's always been a part of my life and it's always been in the back of my mind. I've noticed that you're a bit judicious about bringing up your mom, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. Is it hard to kind of distance yourself from your mom or like want to create your own identity outside of her massive profile that she has as a politician. Is that something that you think about at all? Yeah, I think about it all the time, actually. Uh, it's super hard, because it's like, I'm never Isra Hersi, I'm always Ilhan Omar's daughter Isra Hersi, and so it's a constant battle, and a lot of people assume a lot about our relationship, as if like I talk to her about my activism, or we you know, trade notes, or things like that, when in reality, it's not anything like that. And so when people reference me, it's usually as her daughter. but. I mean, I knew that was going to happen and it is what it is. Growing up in an environment where you were encouraged to go to protests and demonstrations and, and take an active role in society, there are so many causes you can get involved in, right? So why climate and why the intersection of race and climate? I joined my school's environmental club and then started joining local groups at the same time I was doing gun, viol gun violence prevention work, but it wasn't like on my radar as like a big issue. I just wanted to get involved because I think focusing on multiple issues is important. And then, you know, I kept being in these groups and all of these groups were extremely white dominated and not talking about the pipeline in Minnesota going straight through indigenous treaty lands or, you know, how black and brown kids in my city are being impacted with um, air quality and water quality. And so I guess I took it upon myself to, you know, make the distinction between what they were doing and what I think everybody should be doing. And I guess I started talking about it. And after realizing I was probably the only black person in these orgs, you know, I should do something about it. And eventually, you know, USC's climate strike became an opportunity for me. And so I stumbled upon that. We need to recognize that, that like, you know, this envir like, environmentalist, like white idea of sustainable is only for, you know, the white ruling class and not for low-income people who are already doing the best that they can to be sustainable. Those communities of color almost feel like an afterthought when we talk about environmental activism, right? We talk about, you know, eating vegan and, you know, doing things that are quote-unquote green, but nobody's going to these communities and telling them, this is what you need to be doing if you want to, you know, stop this crisis. So nobody's talking to these people in the first place. And so how do you get there? And I think it's like a constant conversation because you don't see these massive, you know, big green organizations talking to communities of color, talking to low income communities. That's kind of something that all the entire environmental justice movement should do as a whole. But we know that environmental issues affect communities of color in huge ways. And environmental justice is something that communities of color are very familiar with. Flint, Michigan is like one of the most prominent examples that comes to mind. But I have heard you talk about how um, it's frustrating that some people don't take you seriously because of your age. Um, how does it make you feel when people don't take you seriously? 
it's a, it's a little bit hard because like a lot of the other organizers I organize with can like vote in 2020 and can do so much more and I feel like I'm almost always the youngest in the room and so it's a little bit harder being 16 um, still in high school and not, nowhere near voting age um, but a lot of the time I realize that like if I can do what I can do at 16 and these adults can't even do their job I feel like there is no point of like being upset about my age because I can still you know influence politics influence American culture at the ripe age of 16 and people can't even do that at the ripe age of 40 so I think I'm doing something right and my age contributes to that what is your plan after high school do you think you'll go to college immediately do you think you'll go to college at all I do want to go to college I don't know if I'll take a gap year or not but I do think that college is in my future I want to be a lawyer when I'm older and so definitely have to go to undergrad and law school to get to that point lawyer then politician is that in your future I know that you are on your policy debate team in high school yeah, definitely. Uh, when I was a kid, I really wanted to run for president when I was five, and I made like a life checklist, and that life checklist definitely includes politician a few times on there. So I guess I have to, you know, agree to it because eight-year-old Isra wanted it to happen. What else is on Isra's life checklist that she made when she was five years old? Um, so it starts off with me going to Harvard, and then, then it starts off with me being a lawyer, and then running for mayor, and then Congress and then president, and then re-election, and then the last line is like, fight for your community and die a legend, and then the back is like signed by Esther Hersey. Do you think you'll stick with that whole checklist? I guess, I don't really care if I go to Harvard University, so that's the only one that I can like, you know, change. But the rest of them, I guess I have to do it just because younger me wanted it to happen. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.